This is Jeff Weiss, HRT 211, Unit 9, with a further discussion of cuttings and layering two of the techniques for propagating plants using asexual methods. Um, this week um, there's uh, readings in three chapters of the text. Uh, you have this lecture and the uh, associated uh, slides and some videos uh, are posted uh, um, that are worth taking a look at to see some of these techniques. Uh, the discussion question will cover um, layering and the uh, assignment of creating a crop schedule um, will be deferred for the uh, class with the lab sessions to um, uh, the lab for Unit 10. So there's some key terms and concepts and basically these uh, uh, provide a overview of uh, the range of uh, techniques that are available for um, propagating additional plants by uh, use of various types of cuttings or uh, layering techniques. And at the end of this unit you should be able to differentiate between the different techniques for making cutting. Uh, explain the use of hormones and other treatments uh, that will increase the success of the um, of the plants derived from these techniques and uh, be able to explain uh, layering and uh, when it is uh, a useful technique. So uh, a couple of um, comments on the on cuttings versus layering. Uh, cuttings is a, a, a very widely used technique and commercially important for producing uh, various uh, herbaceous perennials, uh, container plants, uh, and uh, uh, some forestry um, and other um, fruit and nut trees. Um, so this uh, idea of cuttings, although uh, in some cases it's being uh, supplanted by um, tissue culture and, and uh, micropropagation is still widely used. On the other hand, uh, layering, while it's useful for uh, production of some plants, uh, it's often labor intensive and is uh, 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 less commercially uh, important than uh, cuttings. So this table has a summary of um, some of the types of cuttings uh, some of which we've talked about in a prior lesson. Um, hardwoods uh, are collected during the dormant season and uh, examples are dogwood and willow uh, that we've already um, planted in our greenhouse uh, uh, laboratory. Uh, evergreen cuttings uh, similar late fall to er late winter. Uh, examples juniper, spruce, and yew. Uh, Semi-hardwoods are uh, collected uh, uh, from uh, less mature wood than hardwoods and are usually done uh, 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 throughout the growing season. Some examples are provided. Uh, softwoods uh, make use of early uh, season growth and are um, uh, useful for lilac, forsythia, serviceberry, and other, uh, other especially shrub uh, trees, shrubs and trees. And then herbaceous uh, cuttings uh, uh, can be collected year-round uh, and are uh, commonly used in house plants uh, and uh, other um, uh, flowering plants such as mums and geraniums. Uh, leaf cuttings uh, are uh, similarly uh, useful from uh, uh, house plants, uh, begonia and African violet are two examples here. Uh, root cuttings uh, are like um, uh, hardwoods and, and evergreens usually collected uh, in the dormant season, late winter or early spring. Geranium and sumac are a couple of examples and then uh, leaf bud cuttings uh, uh, can be collected and uh, propagated through the growing season. Some examples here are blackberry and clematis. So there's a wide variety of uh, 
plant types, uh, cutting types, and uh, um, the, the season in which they're um, collected is uh, critically important to their success. So some of the treatments for cuttings once made including uh, include use of hormones and, and um, sophisticated propagators now make use of a wide variety of, of hormones applied at different times to uh, either promote or inhibit various types of uh, um, growth activities. Uh, but in general, auxins promote root growth, root growth uh, cytokinins promote shoot growth, and others may either promote or inhibit uh, and uh, uh, are used in specialty applications. Uh, in the case of uh, these prickly pear cactus uh, that I'm propagating, um, the, um, since it is uh, prone to uh, rotting in the presence of too much, too much moisture, I've uh, just broken off these uh, leaves or cladodes and let them uh, dry out for a week uh, to form callus tissue prior to planting them. Uh, but the, the practice of uh, causing additional wounding to um, promote uh, accumulation of uh, uh, hormones or uh, photosynthates uh, or various techniques to uh, promote callusing and root growth uh, vary a lot between uh, between species. So it's good to refer to a uh, propagation text or um, uh, research practices uh, that other propagators have found successful um, in order to maximize the uh, success of cuttings. And then creating a favorable propagation environment using bottom heat, mist, uh, propagation enclosures or various uh, light regimens um, are, are also uh, um, useful to um, producing successful cuttings. And uh, finally, the uh, good um, hygiene and uh, uh, sometimes use of uh, uh, fungicides or other um, um, pesticides are also um, useful in protecting the plants from uh, various pathogens. So a classic example of an important uh, crop uh, that's produced from cuttings is poinsettia and uh, I provide a few bullets about the history and the variety of, of this plant. Uh, in the US uh, it's a 250 million dollar a year industry and uh, uh, one grower in particular, uh, at least uh, as of a few years ago, their market share was 70% of all of the points that is purchased in the U.S. Uh, and the, the, um, one of the important aspects of uh, poinsettia propagation is that the uh, photo period needs to be manipulated. Um, in, in order to have sales uh, or uh, quality plants available for Christmas time. So um, it, it, it's an interesting and widespread uh, uh, plant and um, a lot of greenhouse space in the U.S. is devoted to uh, uh, propagating this plant in time for Christmas. Another uh, group of plants that are uh, uh, produced frequently from um, cuttings are these uh, conifers and um, since we propagated some in our in our greenhouse lab um, I'm showing you some pictures of dawn redwood or metasequoia glyptostroboides. Uh, it's a plant from China and it's a deciduous uh, uh, conifer and it is uh, we hope at least uh, uh, successfully propagated from uh, uh, hardwood or evergreen cuttings. Uh, something else to think about is how you store um, your your softwood cuttings. Uh, if you do not have green space and you, uh, greenhouse space and you need to short, store them outdoors, um, you need to 
make arrangements to keep them in, in uh, proper uh, lighting, uh, temperature and humidity conditions, uh, select the best time for uh, uh, transplanting them and making sure to uh, harden them off uh, and uh, prepare them for uh, changes in condition in the heat, uh, sunlight, wind uh, uh, conditions so that you don't lose your crop uh, at, as you change from one stage of production to the next. A variety of uh, uh, plants, especially house plants, can be successfully produced from leaf cuttings. And there's a couple of illustrations here for plants that we're going to be uh, working with in the greenhouse over the next few labs. Uh, one is Sansevieri, also called mother-in-law tongue. And the other is African violets. And you can see the uh, 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 new shoots uh, uh, springing from this uh, leaf cutting. Uh, this slide has a few uh, pointers and illustrations of um, stem, uh, herbaceous stem and leaf cuttings and a uh, uh, cutting, uh, making use of a, uh, of a leaf bud. Uh, the next topic is root cuttings and uh, uh, root cuttings are useful for uh, several different plants, uh, notably geranium and sumac. And uh, we'll try to uh, uh, get some plant material so that you can also uh, produce some root cuttings in your um, greenhouse labs. Now we're going to change gears and go from cuttings to layering. And the significant thing about layering is that uh, during the uh, early uh, stages of propagation, a physical connection is made uh, and, and maintained between the uh, parent and daughter plant. So uh, most of us are familiar with uh, uh, strawberries, which grow from runners or stolons above ground. And uh, those uh, uh, runners or the, the new plants uh, will uh, spread from the parent, uh, send down roots, and once the root is uh, formed, then the uh, stolon can be cut and uh, the plant will, the new plant will be self-sufficient. Uh, but this physical connection uh, allows uh, uh, plant sugars, photosynthates, and hormones to accumulate and promote uh, uh, rooting and new growth. So that's the essence of layering is to uh, uh, take advantage of the uh, connection to the parent. Um, uh, however, some uh, uh, manipulations and uh, uh, care is needed to uh, promote successful uh, uh, production of layers. And uh, many of them involve excluding light or um, uh, selecting uh, plant materials that will uh, um, uh, invigorate and rejuvenate the, uh, uh, the plant. So one technique that we're going to uh, test out in the lab is air layering. And in this process, uh, the grower uh, removes the bark from a segment of a, of a, of a branch, uh, scrape scraping the cambium to stimulate uh, uh, hormone uh, accumulation, and then covering the site, wrapping the, 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 the site of the, uh, of the uh, exposed bark with uh, mo moist peat moss and covering it with plastic to maintain the, uh, the humidity. Uh, roots will form in this area in a few weeks. And once they have, uh, it's a simple matter to cut off the rooted segment and to transplant it to form a new plant. Um, this is a, a, a series of photos uh, showing uh, uh, air layering technique for a, uh, a branch of an elm tree. In addition to um, air layering, uh, many plants are adapted to spreading, uh, especially uh, brambles uh, and uh, uh, 
roses and some of the uh, uh, ribes plants, uh, including uh, cranberry and uh, gooseberry, uh, can uh, spread and, and be propagated by uh, basically just putting the tip of the plant underground and allowing that tip to form uh, uh, new roots and new shoots. And uh, it, this can be used in, uh, in your garden if you have uh, fruit plants uh, uh, or uh, roses that you want to, uh, to uh, propagate. The, uh, another variation on this theme of layering is uh, uh, an old forestry technique called coppicing or stooling. And uh, in this technique, the, uh, uh, the, the stem of the, uh, the trunk of the tree is cut off and allowed to uh, form uh, numerous new shoots or stems. Um, uh, sometimes uh, these uh, coppices are covered with, uh, with soil and then they're called uh, uh, mound layers or mound layering. Uh, and, and, but in any event, uh, these uh, numerous new uh, shoots can be used uh, either for production of cuttings or for other purposes such as uh, uh, basketry uh, or even uh, firewood in the case of, uh, of coppices that were made in, the, uh, in, in England in ancient times. Um, another technique, uh, layering technique, is called trench layering in which a trench is dug, the mother plant is uh, bent over uh, into the trench and literally buried alive uh, where it will uh, produce uh, new uh, roots and shoots uh, that can be harvested and uh, uh, used, to, used to propagate additional plants. Uh, there's a, uh, a brief YouTube uh, on this uh, on this topic which uh, you may find worth uh, looking at. But um, examples of uh, <clears throat> this uh, natural layering uh, or production of uh, shoots from uh, stolons and uh, underground rhizomes can be seen uh, uh, in our uh, beach ecosystems. and. Uh, um, so there's an example here of uh, shoots uh, coming up from underground stems uh, along this exposed beach. And some of you who uh, uh, get out to the Lake Michigan shorelines or other uh, wetlands uh, see um, this plant in the lower photo, which is uh, Phragmites or common reed. And this plant uh, uh, grows extensively from the stems which uh, might get knocked down and uh, um, uh, get submerged in water or under sand and these uh, underground st uh, these stems uh, the above ground stems can extend for 20 feet or more uh, sending out uh, new shoots uh, every few inches so um, this plant is very aggressive and can, uh, in the space of a very short period of time, use this, uh, um, this shoot production capability to uh, invade and completely overrun a, uh, a beach or uh, a dune area. And it is a, uh, um, a plant that's uh, expanding rapidly uh, and causing a lot of uh, uh, degraded natural areas in our in our region. So I'm just give you that as an example of uh, how uh, plants can use these uh, techniques uh, without any human assistance. So our discussion question is about uh, layering. Uh, I'd like you to research and uh, describe uh, uh, one uh, plant which can be um, uh, produced via layering, but also to comment on why this uh, process is not as important as other uh, vegetative propagation techniques that we're covering in class. And the assignment uh, for producing a uh, production schedule or crop schedule 
uh, is not um, is not applied to the CLC students in this course. Um, we will be uh, making up a crop schedule in our next lab. So don't worry about this assignment. I think that brings us to the, yes it does bring us to the end of this lecture and um, I hope it was helpful.